With this console generation coming to a close, I feel like not enough people are talking about how good Uncharted 4 was. How could you possibly forget a game that starts off with such a legendary quote? Jam a man of fortune, and Jay must seek my fortune. Henry Avery's 1994. I mean, this game is so good that I literally cannot help but get aroused whenever I play it. But hey, like a good Christian boy, let's suppress those feelings and move on. We're thrust straight in to Nathan Drake and his brother Sam in some kind of boat chase. Sam appears to have made the rookie error of not standing in the cabin of the boat, and with a storm like this, you know those clothes are going to get soaked through. You best whack those in a tumble dryer ASAP, or that cotton is going to shrink. Obviously, because this is an Uncharted game, we can't just have a nice family boat trip, no. Instead, we're being chased down like two children that have just escaped Epstein's Island. Things are actually going pretty swimmingly until the people chasing us realise it's the 4th of July, so they set off some last minute fireworks, slightly inconveniencing us and blowing Nathan Drake into the water. <sighs> Patriots just don't care about public safety. Not that that's something we didn't know anyway, as they think that owning an AR-15 is acceptable. Next thing I know, Sam's saving me from the water and I'm back in charge of the boat but I can't seem to catch a break as out of nowhere comes what can only be described as the boat version of Ghost Rider, except it's lacking the strong backbone of a top tier Nicolas Cage performance. We get a flashback to a younger Nathan Drake, and oh boy I'm excited now as we get to see my number one turn on. Obviously I'm not referring to the child, I'm not quite an A-list celebrity just yet, I'm instead talking about the nun. If you don't agree with me then please, feel free to attend Bible study and tell me that you don't get a semi when Sarah, dressed up as a nun, is reading verse 42. She unfortunately walks out, so I guess I'll have to stop fapping but then someone begins to shine a flashlight on Nathan's face. Which, you know, in an orphanage at 11pm is quite a worrying sign. However, it's all good, as it's just my brother Sam. That being said though, he is at an orphanage in the middle of the night with a flashlight, and he's also over the age of 18. I don't think he thought this one through. It is at this point when I learn that even as a young boy, Nathan Drake was more physically capable than I have ever been during my entire life. We once again encounter the nun, only this time she's talking to the priest. It's definitely not the first time that Nathan has seen the priest post 11pm, but tonight he's gonna get ghosted as seeing his brother is more important. Being ghosted is bad enough, but being ghosted by a child must have your self-esteem on the floor. Like, come on, if you're not good with the ladies, you've got to at least be a good pedo. The nun then decides that it's time to have a smoke, and this is where I get put off her a little bit. As ciggies are a sin, and the only acceptable way to blaze it as a Christian is by using pages of the Bible as papers. But she's just got your bog standard viceroys, so I won't be asking for twos anytime soon. I'm now right next to Sam, and he's still flashing that flashlight to let me know where he's at. He must think I have vision worse than Stevie Wonders, as I'm pretty sure every child at this orphanage has now been woken up by the flashlight. And Sam really needs to think about the other children at the orphanage when shining that light. They have no family, they have no one that wants to come and see them, so all you're doing is just giving them false hope. And let me tell you, false hope is a dangerous thing. I was on Modern Warfare 2 with my boy, and he said BRB. Now his Xbox profile says, last seen online, 8 years ago. It's so weird as well because he vanished when I just gave him 1200 Microsoft points to get me to 10th prestige. Ha! Oh, how wholesome is this eh? Two brothers reunited at last. They've got many things to discuss, many memories to catch each other up on, and oh Christ I'm dead while Sam just watched my brain matter explode all over the pavement. Luckily this is a video game however, so I get a round two in attempting not to give my brother lifelong trauma and oh Christ we've done it again. Like my boy Jesus said, if you die, just come back to life and do it again, forehead. So I take this on board, and this time round we manage to get a result where Sam isn't going to need lifelong therapy. You know what? How about you take this one? Wow, here we go. Time to step up. Our big brother has just entrusted us with the grapple hook, so it's time to show him we know how to shift our body mass using gravity calculations from one surface to another. However, my calculations were more skewed than Anne Frank's definition of hide and seek. You know, with the amount of times that I've died, I'm starting to think that lubing up for the priest isn't such a bad Thursday night. 
When we do eventually make it across the street, Sam reveals that his big surprise and the reason he came to visit us was to show off his new motorbike. Like he's literally just come to an orphanage to flex. Don't get me wrong, it's not like he's turned up to the place with biological parents or anything, as that is the ultimate flex at an orphanage, but still, it's a pretty inconsiderate move. We then get a flash forward a few years into the future, and well, Nathan is at a prison where everyone is bald and speaks Spanish, so you know it's pretty dangerous. This fight also pretty much acts as a basic tutorial to teach you the hand-to-hand -hand combat in this game, and while proving that I can throw hands inside a prison is pretty useful and will hopefully deter anyone from approaching me when I drop the soap, I can't help but think that the combat tutorial would have been much better in the last segment where you was playing as child Nathan Drake. You can't tell me that a battle royale style mode with a bunch of 12 year olds throwing hands at an orphanage for the chance to be adopted doesn't sound like the greatest combat tutorial in gaming. Anyway, the fight is eventually broken up by the guards and we're taken to be put in solitary confinement. Thinking about it now, solitary confinement is actually a good way to describe my sex life. A few days pass and I'm actually having a great dream about taking over the world with my communist brothers. That is until one of the guards, Vargas, comes and gets us out a few days later and then leads us somewhere without actually telling us where we're going. He's definitely not a guy you want with you if your Google Maps decides to stop working. Finally, I'm outside again for the first time in a few days. It feels good to breathe in the fresh air and finally get to watch the boys work out again. As we keep walking, I keep finding further evidence that suggests where we're going isn't going to be a nice place. Like these prison guards beating on the inmate. Did the inmate do something wrong? Or are the guards just poorly handling their emotions because they're unsatisfied and unhappy with where they are in life, so this is some form of self-projection and how they deal with their inner demons? Actually wait, I take back that last comment. Somebody in law enforcement poorly projecting their emotions onto others is something we've never heard of before. Despite sharing similar emotions to those girls who were in Ariel Castro's basement when they were on their way down, it actually ends much better for us as Vargas lets us out a back gate, takes off our cuffs, and that view is only something you could dream about in prison. So yeah, Nathan, Sam, and their friend Rafe have all been intentionally put into this prison solely for the reason that it's the only way to get to this 300 year old cell that once held Henry Avery. The guard Vargas is in on it with us and is getting a cut of Henry Avery's treasure, which is supposedly 400 million in gold. Obviously because we're Nathan Drake and we have the athletic prowess of an Amazon river dolphin, we get up to the cell quicker than a guy called Bryce will slip a roofie in an attractive female's drink. Once up in the cell, we have to solve a complex puzzle that most people would be needing an Excel spreadsheet for, but because I'm a genius, and definitely not because I've played this game before, I solve it within about 30 seconds. Buried in the wall, we found a statue of the penitent thief or Saint Dismas, who was known as the guy next to Jesus while he was on his cross. Wow, here we have a game that not only gives you phenomenal action and adventure, lovable characters, gripping stories, but also educational Christian content. We choose not to tell Vargas about our findings and then go and find Sam and Rafe to further discuss what this Saint Dismas is exactly a clue to. Despite on first look this group looking like a B-Tech Backstreet Boys that are about to break out the chorus to I Want It That Way, they do, believe it or not, know what they're doing when it comes to this treasure hunting stuff and manage to decipher this clue. You figured it out. There is a cathedral of Saint Dismas in Scotland. Wait, the last sighting of Avery was in Scotland. That can't be a coincidence. No. <laughs> the bald guys from earlier then reappear and we're either about to throw hands or we're about to break out into the best choreographed dance routine of 2020. Don't get me wrong, the sexual tension was there for the dance routine but it does end in a fight. Vargas and his other guards then intercept us and find out that Nathan was lying to him as he discovers he has the cross of St Dismas. Like some disobedient students going into a headmaster's office, Vargas takes us back to his office, and because we lied to him, he wants his cut to go up from 10% to 25%. Everyone agrees that it's all good, but then Rafe makes the logical decision to stab Vargas, as he doesn't really fit the B-Tech Backstreet Boys vibe we're going for. Sorry Vargas mate, it's just genetics. You're not an attractive white male of whom you're unsure what team they're batting for. The guards find out, and a mass search is underway to find all three of us, so we use this opportune time to escape the prison. 
We were already going to have a difficult time rivaling Backstreet Boys in the charts as there's less members, but we then unfortunately take a huge blow as we lose another member. No. No, you hold on. Hold on. Sam. Me out of the room. Come on, Reed. No. Sam. We then get taken forward by 15 years, and this is what I call wholesome content. Nathan Drake, done with the treasure hunting lifestyle, and now just living out his best life as a white suburban guy. He's got a normal job. He's got a great basement where he stores all of his treasure hunting memories and can also practice his nerf skills. He married Elena from the first three games and the way that you can tell this without looking at the wedding photos is just by watching him have a conversation with her. Yes, he has indeed learnt the useful skill to block out whatever Elena is saying at any point that he needs a useful skill for those long-term relationships. All is going swimmingly until Sam throws a curveball into the mix by reappearing once again alive. Like I'm not saying I would have preferred my brother to stay dead or anything, but you know, this isn't really what I was planning for on this fine Wednesday morning when I come into work. Naturally, we catch him up with the last 15 years, but then Sam lets us know that the hunt for Henry Avery's treasure is not over, as he needs to find it as soon as possible because he's in big big trouble with some sort of drug lord. A drug lord that helped him escape from prison, but only on the condition that he would find Henry Avery's treasure within the next three months. This game to me is more than just one of the best of the generation, it's one of the best of all time. So I'd be more than happy to cover it more if you guys want to see it. A big thank you as always to those of you who have clicked the join button and become a member of the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate it and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. I just want to give a huge shout out to my mother load Void Boys and above, Gerardo Cruz, Walls of Valhalla, Bjorn Van Den Hatter, Charlie Waldock, Voyeur's Gay and Ghost Warrior 38. Thank you guys so much for your support.